afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a, it's a Thursday afternoon, so I apologize for that. Well, I hope you. So my name is Vajiha Aisha. I, I work at the Arts Teaching Innovation um, at the University of Melbourne. I hope you're not all too feeling down by our another yet another phase of lockdown. Um, I think by now we're used to it, and we we if the lockdown is about to happen, I think most of us are like they should make it do right now so that we don't have to go into a longer lockdown. Um, anyway, so um, Be Here, Be Heard is a, a student voice and student representation uh, project that we've been working on since uh, 2018. And what we, we've done with this presentation is that we, we, we kind of make it into, made it into a panel discussion. So I'll ask questions and Nira and Campbell uh, are going to um, reply to that. But before that, I'll ask um, Nira and Campbell to just um, introduce themselves. All right, this is Neera, and I'm uh, a colleague of Wajiha. Wajiha and I actually uh, have been running this project together uh, ever since. And uh, 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 we are part of Arts Teaching Innovation team of University of Melbourne. And Campbell is our lovely student. Campbell, if you say this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I've am recently finished my uh, honours degree at University of Melbourne in philosophy. Uh, Still, a, still involved in Be Here, Be Heard, and uh, been been a, a member of the team uh, coming up to about two years now. Wow, two years. Um, so, uh, Nira, why don't you start by telling us what Be Here, Be Heard is? Uh, as you mentioned, the Be Here, Be Heard is a student voice uh, project. The central objective of Be Here, Be Heard is to initiate initiate student voice and enable student agency in their arts journey. In its current form, uh, it's a student-led project which promotes student voice as an agency to bring positive changes, developments, inclusions, and advancements in arts teaching and learning. And this particular project actually acknowledges students as co-creators of their educational experience. And this recognizes that students' engagement sits within a broader transformative learning uh, teaching and learning pedagogies, um, which are very sort of uh, central theme of higher education uh, these days. Um, before I move um, forward, could I ask all the participants to please mute your uh, your videos? I can hear a bit of noise in the background. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, Campbell, as a student, how has your representation and participation in this program uh, been? throughout these two years that you've been a part of it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've really been impressed by it. I've been involved in um, student leadership sort of initiatives before, uh, you know, in high school and elsewhere at the university. But um, really what distinguishes Be Here, Be Heard is this, this it takes seriously its mission of being led by students. Um, Nira is, isn't the leader of the team. She's the facilitator. She, she's our sort of conduit to the, to the faculty, but what, um, what Be Here, Be Heard does over the course of the year is determined by students on the team um, based on things students have said in, in the programs and consultations run by Be Here, Be Heard. Uh, so it's very much a, a, a student-led program and it takes that really seriously. And it's not just about consultation and, and book, um, having our voices heard, it's very much about being able to make decisions, deliver programs um, and sort of represent students uh, on behalf of the student body right up to the to the level of the faculty board. So uh, it, it's a really fantastic mode of representation and it sort of fosters this, this kind of collegial uh, sense of community uh, between staff, students and faculty, um, academics uh, like Nira who, who were involved in it in it and others on the arts teaching innovation team who were involved in it. Uh, as an arts student, you get a, a really great sense of uh, the, what the arts faculty is about, who else is involved and how it is this sort of interdisciplinary um, kind of field and, and what sort of uh, work goes on behind the scenes. And you kind of get your foot in the door as a student into what sort of what other things are possible. So you get a really holistic uh, kind of experience as a, as a member of the team, uh, but it also gives you a really holistic view of, of what what the Faculty of Arts is and what, and what its role is in the university. So it's a really, um, really wide reaching, uh, sort of quite um, truly student-led uh, mode of, of partnership and, and co-design. Um, Nira, uh, where does <clears throat> this project sit within the Faculty of Arts? Uh, 
as I mentioned at the beginning that Be Here Be Hard uh, as a project, it acknowledges students as co-creator. And uh, the transformative learning pedagogy is one of the central themes we take uh, within our Faculty of Arts. This project is uh, an in initiative, uh, initial initiative of the co-creation and co-creation agency. And within this project, we actually see our students, um, as Campbell was talking about that, how it is different from other student representation. And it's just not one way data collection thing. So we actually see the students as a uh, consultant uh, at the beginning, and then gradually they can uh, get more involved as um, sort of representative uh, co-researcher, co-designer. And this is the diagram Wajiha and I prepared um, just to, sh and we adopted it from Beauville uh, and, and others, just to uh, sort of describe to our colleagues and you all that how we actually include and involve all our students in terms of ensuring the engagement, their participation, their collaboration and cooperation in this co-creation um, activity. And um, this project is a very much part of that co-creation activity. So it's not just hearing the students and all right, okay, we hear you and then we'll see what we can do. It's we are actually taking students on board uh, as co-creator, as a co-designer, as consultant, as co-researcher uh, to see what changes positive changes and developments, inclusions we can bring within our teaching and learning practices. So kind of, I would like to add to that point is that the strength of this project is not just hearing and listening to student voice, but also kind of implementing uh, th those strategies and those recommendations that are coming directly from them. Um, so the way we normally work is from the first very first focus group that we conducted with students, which was three years ago, we can see those changes now being implemented in the curriculum design. So Neera and I were both educational de designers with different titles uh, within the arts teaching innovation and this connection with students allows us directly to make changes on a subject level, on an assignment level, on a program level. And we also are involved in developing, uh, um, profession, conducting the professional development for academics, uh, arts academics as well. So this, it's kind of three tiered approach that we have where we are getting feedback and insights from students and then working hard to make sure that it goes back to academics that are involved within at different level. Um, and the, 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 the faculty has been very um, sort of proactive in this space as well. So now this project has evolved into co-creating further. So we're talking about including students in governance, um, proper executive governance. Um, so that's the extent of the impact this project has had. Um, I'll just add to uh, what you said, uh, what you had in terms of that, you know, yes, in terms of co-creation, subject engagement, and, you know, the collaboration, cooperation in terms of teaching and learning, but this project also is impacting uh, in a way that it's creating the sense of belonging within the community. So, and that sense of belonging is not just for us as staff members, but also from the students and, you know, creating the sense of, arts identity and taking arts or you know the humanities and arts pride uh, you know uh, and that is very much central to uh, the discussion it is making uh, within the uh, community and so maybe Nira, you can talk a little bit about our roles within this project um, as uh, Wajiha and I always make jokes with our colleagues that we, we are kind of bridge. Wajiha and I make a bridge between, you know, the student and the staff members. So we are actually the facilitators of this project while, while Campbell and students like him are the, uh, you know, the voice of this project. So Wajiha and I organize uh, the facilitation of the student voice and activation of the student agency. We work as a sort of conduit between three stakeholders, primarily one is academics, students and professional staff. But last year, Wajia, uh, uh, what we started doing that uh, Wajia and I started also with our student team, we started talking to the alumni as well. So uh, we are kind of extending that stakeholder towards uh, to even to the alumni. And then 
uh, one of our major roles is develop and deliver a safe space for the students uh, to talk about uh, very freely that what they think about uh, the, the way teaching and learning is being done, how it can be improved, and uh, what are the things they want to see as the part of the academic community. And this is something I, I'm sure Wajah will agree with me. This is something we really take pride of that how students feel free to come to us and talk to us. And sometimes we become their confidant in, in terms of uh, the way they communicate with us and talk to us. And uh, they, uh, you know, in last three years we could see the changes happening in such way that students can feel though it might be slow change but you know uh, they can share with us their ideas and we can take it to the next level so that is something we are doing uh, as academics uh, within the faculty uh, and we'll to you campbell uh, what, what what would you talk about the role that students play within this project practically on a day-to-day -day basis yeah, so there are there are a variety of roles depending on your um, your sort of level of engagement and, and involvement with Be Here Be Heard. At, at the simplest level, you can be a, a, effectively a student consultant who comes along to the events we run. So, which we'll talk about in a moment, but uh, focus groups, the pop up cafe initiative, uh, and our annual symposium. Uh, if you come along to that, you're you're serving as a consultant. You're in workshops. You're in discussion with members of the team or, or members of the arts teaching innovation team, um, and having your voice heard that way. But there are other sort of ways of getting more, more integrated as you become um, a more active sort of member of the Be Here, Be Heard team. And that's where you're actively workshopping and collaborating with academics. You're speaking with other uh, members of the faculty, staff, academics and students alike at, in different fields. Uh, and you're being, being involved in the process of developing and delivering um, the, the sort of consultation programs and workshops as well so you are sort of on the other side of the fence as a facilitator as much as as a consultant at that level then finally um, you you might be someone who is quite quite prominent in and, and quite active in, in be here be heard once you've been working with it for a while and you uh, will be delivering new projects, designing new projects. You'll be actively reporting on student voice over the course of that year to the faculty board. So I was lucky enough to do that um, early, at the end of last year, report on our findings from 2020, which was a very, quite a significant thing, quite a significant year. Um, and so that, that was great. I, I went from someone who at the very start was just attended a, a basically a workshop to someone who was able to really um, speak on behalf of students to directly to the Dean of Arts. Uh, and everyone in the arts faculty has that opportunity to be involved and be here, be heard. We, we don't selectively recruit. Anyone who wants to be involved can get involved in some capacity or another and we'll kind of, um, there's pathways for them to be involved in all sorts of ways uh, in, at increasing levels of, of complexity. Another um, sort of uh, way that, that we're involved, not just as um, uh, collaborators in terms of consultation, but we're, we're also um, doing a lot of, writing even behind the scenes, um, sort of putting together reports of, of the data that we've collected uh, to deliver either to the faculty or back to students to report on what we've been doing. Uh, all sorts of things at that level that again is, is, is done by us. We work quite autonomously a lot of the time, particularly during 2020, during the online period. Um, a couple of other students, members of the team and I uh, were, were running projects without really even consulting Nero. We would just go off and <laughs> Do, do it ourselves and run it ourselves so at that level it, it very much is this autonomous um, kind of student student entity that is co-designing um, and partnering so so there's different levels and, and different roles at different levels of complexity and involvement and they roughly um, tend to correspond to how long you've been involved with the project you kind of move move through the the different roles so so that's how that's that's how it works so uh nira most of the stuff that campbell has done has been online because he joined us in uh around 20 yeah end of 2019 yeah. um so how how was your experience in transitioning this project to online how, how did it work I'd, like anyone else in this room uh, uh, i will say last year hasn't been easy it was a challenging year and wajia and i needed to really really work closely with our student team to find out the innovative ways to connect with more students and uh, provided them a safe space as that is something we wanted to always do. And last year, particularly, it as it was a very challenge, challenging year, we needed to make sure that students have voice uh, when the campus was not uh, 
you know, available for them. And uh, it's everything was online. So there was no kind of sense of community or sense of uh, the campus and friends and uh, things like that. So this is something we closely worked with the student team uh, in terms of how we can continue uh, the dialogue and you know the conversation um, throughout the year. We even had to move our um, uh, annual symposium uh, online. And uh, Campbell might uh, focus more on that. What are the steps we took last year in particular? Uh, you know, what are the actions we took last year uh, in terms of facilitating the student voice and agency? Campbell? Um, yeah, so last year, um, it, it, it was a difficult transition. Uh, to, to moving online, partly because some of our initiatives had not even been running offline and we, we already had to kind of rejig them to, to run online. So um, we're running focus groups. Nero, Nero was, was very much leading that, um, where the, the idea was to have a quite free flowing um, discussion with students to hear their thoughts, but focused around a theme. So uh, online teaching and learning for, for much of last year was a, a really prominent theme there. Um, one of our, our sort of flagship programs last year was the pop-up cafe that was named that way because initially it was going to be a live on campus thing where we had um, tea and coffee set up um, for, for students to come and sit down and have a chat with, with the team and, and share their thoughts on whatever topics. Uh, but we had to uh, sort of migrate across to Zoom so that, that substantially changed how, how the program was structured. But the spirit of it was the same, which is that we would have a session open for a certain period or a certain time. Students could drop in at any time, leave at any time and discuss whatever they like. So rather than being structured around a theme, students were invited to share their thoughts on anything, no matter how minor, no matter how specific to their personal experiences. What we wanted was to, uh, to get them to share the things that they might otherwise uh, not have an opportunity to. Things that slip under the radar because maybe students feel that they're they're, you know, they're being petty if they if they complain about this idea. They maybe feel that it's an issue that's so specific to their circumstances that it isn't worth um, sort of uh, making making a statement about. Uh, we wanted students to to come in and, and share whatever they liked, uh, no matter how small or how specific. So that was that was the idea behind that. And in that discussion, which was facilitated by members of the team, so rather than have a one one person leading the discussion and different people sort of chiming in, it was a free flowing discussion between students who are members of the team and students who had just sort of come for this event. Uh, and that was a really great way to collect some, some really interesting perspectives on arts experience in general, but also on the, the quite specific circumstances of last year in, in learning online. So that was a really, really important initiative and our findings from that kind of um, informed how we structured the, our, our annual event, which is the Reshaping Arts Symposium, which we've had in person once and, la and last year it was online. Uh, that's an initiative where we bring uh, members of academic staff, support staff, uh, members of the board, as well as students from all year levels, graduate and undergraduate, uh, to this two day conference event where there are workshops on particular themes and issues that are just as much about oriented towards solutions as well as uh, generating and, and identifying problems. Uh, and then there are panel discussions in plenary where uh, the whole arts community comes together to have their voices heard, to share their perspectives and sort of come up with solutions together. So that was a, a really important event and the culmination of, a, of, of really the entire project for that year. And, uh, and the findings from that were then presented to the faculty board a couple of months later. And Campbell, very quickly, maybe you could talk a little bit about the interactive publication as well. Yeah, so there isn't too much more to say about this. This is one, um, this is one aspect of, of what we do as, as uh, a means of communicating our findings and, and the project to other students as well as to, to academics who might not be aware of what Be Here, Be Heard does. Uh, it's an interactive digital publication. So uh, part of what we really like about that is that it allows us to write articles about what Be Here, Be Heard has done. Uh, and students write those articles, of course. But we can also integrate, and you can see here in the image, uh, we integrate voice clips from voice recordings of things students have said over the course of the year. So you can listen to those, those student quotes. And there are some really fabulous insights there, really interesting things students have said. And you can, we, we it, it sounds a bit cheesy, but we really, we really like the idea that you can literally hear the student voices through this publication. Um, so that's, a, that's something that we will be doing every year. 
it's it's up, um, designed and, and written by students and it's sort of our means of communicating to, to the faculty uh, what we've been doing and showcasing that. Um, Anira, uh, just to wrap up, what is where, where to next? And as Campbell mentioned that every year when we do the annual symposium, we kind of talk about what we have discussed so far within that year and that actually leads us you know, to the kind of vision for the following year. And so in 2021, we'll be still talking about online teaching and learning because uh, it is still happening very much real and many of our students are uh, offshore uh, still and many of our subjects are uh, sort of uh, taught online. So that's there. Arts identity is one of the things uh, and inclusive arts community and particularly uh, last year has taught us that how the sense of community or sense of belonging is so important and particularly arts being such a huge faculty that sense of community is so important at the same time the arts identity is very important because in the social uh, kind of uh, psyche arts degree might not be as valuable as you know the other professional degree uh, whereas the statistics is saying something different but uh, our politicians sometimes don't and the policymakers don't really always uh, agree with us the most of them are art students all right so we want to say that how that is sort of growing that arts identity is really crucial and as i mentioned that working with the alumni the industry and our academics are part of that so that's kind of what we are working towards this year listening to the students we are still running the pop-up cafe virtually and the focus groups are running and we are planning towards our october symposium this year as well um, yeah, the, we we so we got a little bit of grant to actually connect our local students with international students, and it's a it's a grant that's going to fund a project where students will develop videos here and in, in overseas, and they'll we'll just have a web based platform where they will invite people and have a space for them within the classroom or tell them how the campus looks like, which won't happen within this lockdown period, but hopefully will ha will happen in in the months and the weeks to come. Uh, just just wanted to say that it, this has been a, a sheer privilege to work with students and develop this project uh, but also we would be very very much interested in um, connecting with anybody who wants to connect with us and have cross um, cr cross faculty cross um, institute collaboration or or, or, or meetings or, or presentations we, we, we were very much we're very much looking forward to contact people who actually are doing and working within this field to understand how to better improve our project, but also to contribute better to this whole field of student partnership and student voice. Thank you very much. And, and Wajia, just to answer Kat's question, it's a wonderful question, Kat, uh, you put in the chat box that, uh, you know, the what reward and recognition do you offer students involved in Bihar Bihar? And as Campbell and I, um, uh, we tried to explain that students actually get involved in various different ways. So, uh, you know, it uh, and the recognitions are also various different uh, levels. So some uh, sometimes students can get the scope to do uh, work as an intern for this project and that uh, goes to their internship subject so that internship is organized and the students who really work as the researcher and co-researcher and co-designer of the thing so our core team so every year 10 to 12 students they really work uh, at that level they actually get the dean's Rec recognition certificate uh, from the faculty and uh, they get the referral letter from the associate dean as well and uh, so the recognitions are of various uh, levels and ways we try to recognition but we are very mindful of in terms of uh, you know the vouchers and uh, you know the payment issues because uh, we needed to make it very sort of um, uh, what should I say, what, yeah, that it's egalitarian and uh, make uh, sort of everyone gets some scopes and, you know, it's a, it's a voluntary uh, sort of participation, but we recognize their uh, participation. And one of the other things, Wajia and I started doing it from, particularly from 2020, uh, if I'm wrong, Wajia, correct me, that it's a part of the collegial process as well. So we actually take our students like Campbell. Last year, we took other students to different conferences to present with us, to talk to uh, you know, uh, the different academic community. And the interactive publication uh, Campbell mentioned, that is also part of recognition because students are the writers there and they are writing, co-writing with us. 
and uh, you know they are code editor of that and so you know getting their names printed and publishing as a student writer uh, this is something uh, we recognize as recognition did i miss anything uh, Wajia? no you didn't but also uh, um, sonia asked if this idea has been spread to other faculties yes it has actually it's been taken up by the, the by the university uh, by the university executives um, and we have this project called student uh, it's a student uh, student life project and uh, other faculties are taking this kind of um, student voice and student partnership approach towards their student life uh, projects um, as well so yeah it's gonna it's it's it's, it's, it's really is expanding so yeah that's pretty cool and yeah. last year we are all right Nira, we have to all sorry, right okay, we have to kind of cut it because rebecca says we have to go back to the session but please contact us yeah, yeah.